Welcome to this demonstration on uh, rubbing techniques with colored pencil. And uh, I have a picture here. I'll post this picture online if you want to print it out and follow along with me. This is a picture from my gar uh, garden, and it is a just a real simple, I think, Indian blanket flower that grows, or Rebecca flower that grows in our yard. And um, I have a piece of uh, smooth bristle board, which is a paper I work on most often with these Prismacolor pencils. Um, I like the smooth surface because it's easier to blend on for me. Uh, the tricky part is when you are rubbing or working with rubbing uh, from underneath, if you have a paper that's this thick, sometimes it's difficult to get a good rubbing because it's a little bit too thick. Um, we'll, I'll show you a workaround for that that works fairly well. So I have a piece of uh, sandpaper that I'm going to use. This is a really pretty heavy gauge of 40, I think, sandpaper. Whereas this one, um, 60C. And uh, this one probably through this paper would not show very well. If you're using sketch paper or even uh, colored pencil paper, then this lighter gauge would work. But I'm gonna go for the heavy gauge piece of sandpaper. And then the colors I'm gonna be using of Prismacolor are, let's go light to dark, of course your white, I'll throw the black in there too, those are just typical in my pieces, uh, canary yellow, orange, goldenrod, sienna brown, um, this one is crimson red, and then your uh, Tuscan red as well. And and set those aside and we'll just get started. And I'm going to work from the center out. So the center that I see here, I'm going to work with the canary yellow and the goldenrod. And I'm going to put down that canary yellow first. And I'm using a scumbling, what we call a scumbling motion. It's just round and round. And I'm working on a uh, pad here. It gives me a little bit softer surface underneath. I kind of like having that that padding. Okay, now I'm going to take the goldenrod, and I have a really sharp point on this goldenrod, so I'm going to put it on its side because I really don't want to dig into that. Um, and scumble again. Just round and round motion. Not all the way into the center here. I want to give it dimension, so I'm going around the outer edges and then letting it blend into that yellow a little bit, but I don't want it to uh, overpower the yellow. So it's okay to go through the center as long as you don't just make the whole thing one value, right? That's what we're going here for is a little bit of a value contrast. Now back with the yellow to blend that a little bit better. Now, in that very center you could use a dark brown or um, you could even use a red. I'm going to use a black to make these little holes that are happening in the center here and in the picture they actually aren't just all over the place. There actually is a pattern of how they go in there but I'm not going to worry too much while I do this demonstration for you. Let's get them in. All right, and there are some little nuances. I mean, depending on how, how much you want this to really look like that, you could, um, how much you really want it to look realistic. You could go back with your sienna brown and kind of go around the outer edges of those blacks. You could add in some of the little squiggly bits and pieces that are happening in there if you like. Um, I'm not going to worry about that too much right now. I can always go back later and add more. I'm going to go with my Sienna Brown next. And I'm going to draw the outer edge of the yellow. Give myself a little bit of a boundary on the outer edge here of the flower center. And I'm just making it a, as you'll see, it's almost a fake tree. Uh, motion that we usually draw when we're drawing the little little kid lollipop trees um, just to make it a rugged edge and now I'm going to scumble loosely in here. Now you could just use this method to get in this kind of variation or this variegation that's happening inside there. The texture is really pretty. But I'm going to go in here and lay that down. Now I'm going to put a little white down just because I have a thick piece of paper and to go around for getting uh, a rubbing to work a little better is to have some wax on the paper already. So if my paper is thick and I 
try to make a rubbing through it, it doesn't always work very well. But if I add a little bit of wax to it, it will amplify the ability to pick up that background. So now I'm going to take this piece of sandpaper and um, you may have to look at, hold it up to the window and look at the light to see where your center is. Um, I can kind of figure it out because I'm just right there. All right, and through the paper, I can actually feel where it's sitting. Uh, at this point, I'm going to go with sand brown on its side. And I'm using a good amount of pressure. I don't want to break that tip, but you can see how I'm getting some spots in here from the sandpaper. That's exactly what I was going for. Okay, so now while the sandpaper's under there, no reason to worry about pulling it out right away, I'm going to add a little bit of the, um, there's some kind of cool tonal things happening in the center here. I'm not totally satisfied yet. So I'm just going to add some of these really pretty my color may be a little bit more bright than what's in the picture. That's just because I love bright colors. So I'm just going to do it and put it in. Okay. Now I'm also going to go around the edge and kind of not all the way around, but in places just add a little bit of a heavier, uh, pressing down heavier to get more of that color in. And not just a, an outline around the whole thing, obviously, but just enough to give it some variation. Now I'm going to pick up my paper and turn it just a little bit on the colored on the um, the uh, sandpaper underneath because I don't want to just pick up the same dots. And I'm using a Tuscan red now to rub again. Look at that, wonderful, isn't it? Comes in just so easily and so quickly, effortlessly, right? And then what I notice about this flower is that there's some kind of dark, really dark and black area. So I'm going to use my black on its side to create those. And remember, I've still got the sandpaper underneath. I'm just going to let it pick up some of the spots of that. And I'm using it on its side in order to make sure I don't dig in and just make color all over. All right, and letting the black just kind of fill in here and there, not going over the yellow, be careful about that, but pressing well enough to pick up that sandpaper. Now, I think my sandpaper, nope, it's right centered right there. It's okay to move it a little bit here and there if you don't feel like you're getting enough of that. Okay, great. Now, once again, I love this bright, colory stuff in the center, so I'm just going to add some of those. I've still got the sandpaper underneath. There's no need to move it out. It can add some really beautiful... Look at how pretty that is. It didn't take much to put that in. It was really easy, wasn't it? It's just a matter of chance sometimes, and you just end up with a really beautiful picture. Now, uh, before I put in any of these little like eyelash things that are happening around the outside of the center, I'm going to pull out my sandpaper. I'm done with that for the moment. And I'm going to work on some of these petals and show you how to go about them. And I may not do all of the petals. I'll finish it and post it online for you. But I just want to get you started to show you how you'll go about finishing up this piece. I am using this wonderful crimson red. It's a very bright red. And I love those bright colors. And I'm just going to go from the center out in sweeping motions some heavier than others because I want some of them to stick around. If you'll notice, there's some lines I'm going from center out to tip. Not across, not around. Center to tip. Just like that. And let them reach out a little bit. Okay, there's a cluster of petals right there. I'm going to go back with the white now. And I'm going to use the white as a blender. And I'm going to go right down into that red with the same motion, not going back and forth over it, but going from the center to the tip. And this does two things. It blends it, it well, and it holds on to some of those lines that I want to stay in there. If you find any of them are too strong, then you can just add more white, or you could if you needed to go back and erase a little bit here and there. But I don't feel like I need to do that. Now, I know there's a shadow down here. I could actually even use purple or something like that in there and add a lot of life to it. But I'm just going to put the red in for the moment. Go right on top of what I just put in there of the white. Look at how strong that is. Isn't that beautiful? 
I'm going to lose some of that when I put in some of the fronds from the center still, but I do like that. Okay, if I feel like there's not enough of this red coming out here on its side, I can add a little bit more. I can go back over it with white. I'm going to sharpen my white. I'm going to pretend like I'm sharp. There we go. There we go. My sharpener is ready for a new battery. And I'm going to dig down in so I don't lose all those wonderful, delicious red lines I just put on. Blend a little bit out here. And now with that canary yellow, I'm just going to grab the tip and let it blend down. Pretty. Really pretty. Lovely. Okay. If I'm not totally happy with that, I could still go back in and add hints of the orange into that yellow and make it even a more stunning yellow. And then go back in and you don't have to do that, but I just love the really blazing color, so I have a tendency to want to do that. Now, I'm going to go back in and a few of these petals here, I can see that there's a little bit of separation where there's a shadow happening. So I want to pay attention to some of those shadows and I'm going to use just pressure of my pencil pressing in to get more of a, a shadow. See how that goes. This petal right here might have a little bit of a shadow starting just like that. Okay now let's draw those fronds. I would do that all the way around and then I would start putting in some of these little eyelashy like things and see how easy those can go in, right? And then I want it to blend in with that. So once again, the black on its side, spotty, not just a big wreath lollipop looking thing all the way around the outside, but, and then go back and blend it in with some of your other colors that you use too, just so that it really looks natural, okay? If you feel like you want more shadow in the base of these petals, you can go back in with the brown. You could actually even go back in with a little bit of purple. See how that darkened out those centers. And then I don't want to lose these beautiful black fronds coming from the center of this. I feel like there's some kind of even more dots happening in here, so I might add them. Beautiful. Just like that. Okay. Now, once you get all of this flower done, um, the real exciting part about this piece is when you start to put in that background. I'm grab a green just so you can start to see a little bit of what that's going to look like. And uh, this is a this is a good green. This one here is actually um, oh Prussian green. You're not going to find that in some of the smaller sets. Uh, you know, I think. I'm going to go for with this green. I probably will just go ahead. No, I'll use it. You could use a moss green, a marine green. Some of those are a little bit more subdued greens rather than the really bright um, bluish greens that we get sometimes. And I'm just going to follow the edges. Now for the background, I wouldn't color it all. Just I mean, you could just color it all one color. Um, if I did, I probably would use pressure to create this. Some areas light and some areas dark, and some areas really dark, right? I would use this in the background if I was only going to use one color just to create some of the variations that happen around here. But just to show you what that can look like with this petal, I'm going to outline where my boundary is. And I'm pressing really hard. You remember, I'm a burnisher, so I love to put down heavy, heavy applications of the wax waxy pencil. You can already see how this flower is going to develop. It's going to be really pretty with a background that's dark and really uh, makes it stand out. And the green is a, is a uh, complement to this red that's down in here. And if you'll notice in the flower, there are some little spaces here of relief in between the, uh, the petals where that green's going to come down and be right next to the, the um, red, which is lovely. So you might just put some of those in as you go around. So 
That's really what I wanted to show you in this exercise. You go ahead and finish your piece with what you just learned today about the rubbing and the blending with your white. And I will finish my piece and post it on my website so you can see it. I'll also post the image of this beautiful flower for you so that you can follow along with me and enjoy and have fun. If you enjoyed this demo, then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And thank you for watching.